Today is our fourth session of Lenten contemplations. During our first session, we witnessed Jesus, the resurrection and the life, weep for his dear, lifeless friend, Lazarus, then call him forth to experience life once more. During our second session, we witnessed Jesus condescend to the role of a servant as he washed our feet and then told us to go and do likewise. Last week during our third session, we watched in horror as hundreds of soldiers and police led Jesus away in shackles to be questioned by the high priest. We also witnessed Peter mask his identity three times as he denied any association with his rabbi, Jesus. This week, our text begins with the very next verse. Similar to last week, today's passage, passage contains two locations. Inside Pilate's Jerusalem headquarters and outside his headquarters. Any Jew who would go inside a Gentile space would be considered unclean. If the Jewish leaders were to enter for the trial, they would not be able to participate in the Passover festival. So Pilate will need to move between the two locations. One could say he is waffling back and forth. He is after all in a precarious position. Pilate, the prefect for the Roman occupied territory of Judea, lives in Caesarea Maritima, the city built by Herod the Great to be Judea's capital, not Jerusalem. Every year at Passover, he travels the 100 miles to Jerusalem. Why does he do this? Passover, of course, is the festival that commemorates when God's chosen people, the Jews, rose up and threw off the regime of empire, the Egyptian empire, declaring their freedom from imperial oppression. So it makes sense that Pilate, the local Roman ruler, would be here in Jerusalem with his army during Passover to make sure to keep the peace, the Pax Romana. So when Pilate asks Jesus if he is a king and Jesus speaks about his kingdom, Pilate, of course, can only think about a kingdom as he knows it, the kingdom of empire, power, armies, oppression, death, but Jesus comes from an upside down kingdom, the kingdom of shalom, humility, service, relationship, love. It is no wonder that Pilate ends his questioning with the perplexing question, what is truth? This scene makes me wonder, in our context, how can we speak truth to empire when hopefully we, like Jesus, have a completely different worldview than those in power, like Pilate? There is, of course, much more that could be said about this text and many different points within the text to ponder. So I will be curious to hear your reflections at the end of our session. I wonder which parts of the story will pique your curiosity. Before I read the passage, I will light my candle to represent the presence of God with us here today. May we be open to the graces of this Lenten season. John 18. 28 to 40. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. 
It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my follow followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. The word of the Lord. So before I guide you through the passage with questions and pauses, let us take a couple of centering breaths. Breathing in God's spirit and breathing out anything that distracts you from being in the presence of God. May we be open to the graces of this Lenten season. I invite you to enter the story. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. As you watch through the early morning haze, what do you see? Is it still dark outside? Or can you see light coming up over the horizon? Who is escorting Jesus? How do they treat him? Who is in the crowd that follows? What sounds do you hear? Are the people coming out of their homes to see what is happening? They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. What are you feeling towards these people 
who are concerned about breaking Jewish purification laws and yet clearly desire to have a man killed. What do you hear as they make their presence known? How long do they wait at the entrance before Pilate appears? The pilot went out to them and said, excuse me a moment. Okay. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? When you see Pilate emerge from his headquarters, what do you feel? What does Pilate look like? How does he stand? And who is standing with him? When he speaks, does he look at Jesus? Does Jesus look at him? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. How do you react when you hear that they aren't able to explain their charges against Jesus? Perhaps in their haste, they hadn't come up with feasible legal or criminal charges against him. What are the chances that Pilate will take this case based merely on their word? Have they given Pilate reason to trust them in the past? Does Pilate look at them with an eye of suspicion? Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. When you hear that Pilate doesn't want to judge Jesus, do you feel hopeful or worried? Look at Jesus. What are his reactions to this conversation? The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Look at Pilate's facial expression. How does he respond to this? Does he understand that their intention is to have Jesus executed by crucifixion. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? As you watch Pilate's guards, lead Jesus into the headquarters, what are you feeling? What does the inside of Pilate's interrogation room look like? Who was present for this trial?
When Pilate questions Jesus, what is his continence? Why does he ask this question, are you the king of the Jews? The Jewish leaders who brought Jesus here did not tell Pilate that they charged Jesus with this claim. Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Does Pilate seem surprised that Jesus responds to his question with a question? Does he seem annoyed by this or amused? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Do you suppose that Pilate is asking Jesus for information he already knows? Perhaps Pilate's network of spies and informants have brought news of Jesus's notoriety to him for years. If not, what does this say about Pilate's pulse on the people he had, has been appointed to reign? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my father, followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. When Pilate hears this, how does he react? Do you suppose he feels threatened or assured by Jesus's response? We're just plain confused. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Is this a good thing or a bad thing in Pilate's eyes? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. As Jesus explains his life mission to Pilate, how confident does Jesus seem? Does Pilate match Jesus's level of confidence or does he appear confused? Pilate asks him, what is truth? Is this a rhetorical question or does Pilate wait for an answer before turning to leave? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? How does the crowd react to this? What emotions are you experiencing? Do you feel a glimmer of hope?
they shout it in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Listen to the people shouting to condemn Jesus and free Barabbas. How does this make you feel? Have you heard of Barabbas? Do you know his charges? Now, Barabbas was a bandit. He was a bandit, a robber, a lace trace, lace taste. This is the same word John used earlier to describe, pardon me, this is the same word Jesus used earlier to describe a thief climbing over the wall of the sheepfold. The kind of thief whom Jesus described as having come to steal, kill, and destroy the sheep. This is the kind of man whom the Jewish leaders desired to free instead of Jesus. How does this make you feel? I invite you to spend the next 10 minutes in a colloquy conversation with the divine. Speak to God about what you experienced during the contemplation, especially the parts of the story that caused you to experience strong emotions, the parts that gave you joy or left you feeling uneasy. What might God want to say to you about your life as it relates to this story? When I sound my chimes, this will indicate that you have about a minute to wrap up your colloquy, after which time I will end the silence with a psalm. If you're doing this contemplation later with the recording, Go ahead and hit pause now so that you can spend as much time in silent contemplation as you feel you need. Then restart the video when you are ready to hear the psalm. I will close our time of silence with Psalm 145 verses 10 to 13. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your dominion and speak of your power so that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your dominion. Your sovereignty is an everlasting one. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. Lord, you are faithful in all your words and merciful in all your deeds. Amen.